She has met with world leaders 1,700 times in the past four years, but as of Friday, Hillary Clinton will no longer be Secretary of State. Today, Massachusetts Senator John Kerry was confirmed as her successor. I've interviewed Secretary Clinton nearly a dozen times, and I've never seen her so relaxed or upbeat. We sat down for her last television interview in office. No topic was off limits, from the most contentious global issues to the most intensely personal ones. She's been Secretary of State for four years, visited 112 countries, more than any of her predecessors, logged almost a million miles. But it's where she's going next that has everybody talking. Let's just say this isn't the first time the question has come up. In Moscow, three years ago, you told me, I have absolutely no interest in running for president, none. You're never going to run for president again? I have again? absolutely no interest in running for president again. None, none. Two years ago, you said the exact same thing in Australia. You said, talk about the future, you said you're not running for president in 2012 or 2016. <laughs> what about 2020? <laughs> And yet, in the past few days, a PAC called Ready for Hillary has been launched. Can you still say with a straight face that you have, that there's no way you would consider running for president? Sitting here right now, that is certainly what I believe. And I am, you know, still the Secretary of State, so I'm not in politics. I'm going to be focusing on my philanthropy, my charities, my uh, writing and speaking. Um, so I, I am looking forward to uh, having something resembling a kind of normal life again. And yet, are we up to maybe? <laughs> That's very good, Cynthia. Well, of course, of course, I am uh, flattered and honored. I didn't even know about some of these things that are happening now. I don't know how else to say it, but I am going to... Uh, you know, get back into my life again. This is uh, going to be new for me. I don't know how I'm going to react to it, to be honest. When you conceded defeat in the primary, you made a famous speech in which you said that there were 18 million cracks in the glass mm -hmm. ceiling. Although we weren't able to shatter that highest, hardest glass ceiling this time, thanks to you, it's got about 18 million cracks in it. <laughs> If in the course of the next couple of years it appears as it does appear right now that you might be the person who could actually break through that glass ceiling and become the first female president of this country, would you feel a certain obligation to seize that mantle? I do want to see that glass ceiling shattered. I don't think it has to be any particular person. But <laughs> there's never been a woman who really had a credible chance and it looks as if you might just be that person. And I know how seriously you take commitment and obligation. Right. But I'm not making any commitments or obligations because I do take them seriously. We've been following Clinton since her days in the Senate, through awkward Hi. weeks as a presidential Hi. candidate Hi. in Hi. Iowa. Up, up and away. To the end right. of that so road. And call. on to we a new job Alaska. that took her around the world. <laughs> and over these years, an evolution from grim determination, often wooden and cautious. I'm a more reserved person. To today, at ease, no, I mean, in on the joke, right. Right, comfortable letting people hear that famous <laughs> laugh. <laughs> but a recent series of medical problems have been no laughing matter, when in early December, the high-flying chief diplomat was grounded. Well, it's good to see you looking so healthy. Thank you, thank you. It, it really was a serious health scare. Well, it was a big surprise to me because I've been so healthy for my entire life. So uh, when I got sick and, and fainted and uh, you know, hit my head, uh, I, I was so surprised. And I thought, well, I'll just get up and go to work. And then, you know, thankfully I had very good medical care and doctors just said, nope, we better do an MRI and we better do this, we better do that. I'm, I'm getting uh, fully recovered and I will be back to full speed, but uh, I'm grateful for the excellent care I got. So as one woman who wears glasses to another, <laughs> I'll tell you what happens if I take mine off. I can't see my questions. Right. If you take yours off mm -hmm. right now. Right. Well, that would have been true even before I had a concussion. If I take mine off, I, you know, I've been nearsighted since I was nine. This whole seeing double thing, is that true? Well, I have, I have some lingering effects from the concussion, but, you know, they will dissipate uh, over the next weeks, and I'll be back to my old myopic self. <laughs> I know that there's no plans for future public service, but if there were to be, 
would you feel comfortable making a pledge that you would release whatever records? Oh, of course, yeah, that doesn't bother me. I mean, you know, that, that's just something that goes with the territory. What else goes with the territory? Something Clinton is certainly familiar with, harsh criticism and tough questions. She was called before Congress last week and grilled over what she has called the low point in her tenure, the security lapse in Benghazi, Libya, that led to the death of four Americans, including Ambassador Chris Stevens. In the first days, the controversy reached a boiling point over this. There was a violent protest, violent protest outside of our embassy. U.S. Uh, Ambassador to the U.N. Susan Rice's explanation uh, that the murders were the result of an anti-Muslim video. Reacted with violence. That turned out to be uh, false. Have it was a pre-planned terrorist attack. In her testimony, Clinton pulled no punches. They didn't know that. With all due respect, the fact is we had four dead Americans. Was it because of a protest or was it because of guys out for a walk one night who decided they'd go kill some Americans? What difference at this point does it make? It is our job to figure out what happened and do everything we can to prevent it from ever happening again, Senator. And today, she doubled down. It seemed as though you lost your temper at the hearing. When someone tries to put it into a partisan lens, when they focus not on the fact that we had uh, such a, a terrible event happening with four dead Americans, but instead, what did somebody say on a Sunday morning talk show? That to me is not in keeping with the seriousness of the issue and the obligation we all have as public servants. But do you regret what difference at this point does it make? No, said? because I think that, you know, asking questions about talking points for a Sunday morning talk show is really missing the point. I believe in transparency. I said, you know, let the chips fall where they may. Put it all out there. And I don't want that to be politicized. So you stand by what you said? Absolutely.